Big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Welcome back to Concept Art Class, the series where I hold your little hand through the process of making concept art and finished illustrations for my upcoming RPG card game. A series where I also show off your artwork. By the end of this video, you will learn these four things. How to research and choose reference images, pumping out dozens of designs like a machine, refining the designs in a smart way by balancing functionality and style, and then finally, some tips and tricks for how to take your drawings from concept sketch to finished painting. And you can use the bits of knowledge in this video to make your drawings more interesting, start padding your portfolio with better art, summon the dead, and actually designing things instead of just doing studies from references. Yeah, I called you out, what are you gonna do about it? In the last video, we designed and illustrated some weapons for the card game. This time, we'll be designing and illustrating armor. Let's start by going through some of the designs that you sent in using hashtag ZabioArtsArmor to see what we're working with. Remember, no judging. These are just meant to be sketches. We're not worried about pretty art. We're just focused on designs. By the way, I didn't say this the last couple of times, but if you try to copy somebody else's designs, I'll probably notice because I've noticed when it happened before. So if you're gonna copy somebody's art, use that as practice. Don't say that it's your artwork. We're gonna start with Instagram. Oh, look at that. Got my logo in there too. It's kind of easier to see that it's chainmail that way when it's not all together in one thing with uh, what looks like a Tolkien symbol on it. Very nice, appreciate the reference. What does that mean in Elvish? What is that language called? Surth? Surth runes. Translation. Yeah, so that's a D. Interesting. Ah! Excuse me, sir. The more designs you do, the harder it gets because then your brain's like, well, I've thought of all these, all of them, all my ideas are gone. What do I draw now? I'm out of ideas. You always have more ideas, always. I sorta like how they turned out. Yeah, you better like how they turned out. These are gorgeous, man. Wow, the guard too. <laughs> it has the X logo, nice. Merch is out, baby. If you wanna support the channel, go get one. <sighs> Thank you. By the way, I would just like to point out that Morphinate even designed these little the pattern that the chainmail would go with. That is some high level detail thinking right there. Gonna be honest with you here, can't read the writing, but we'll give it a like anyway. Illustrations, right? Don't care about pretty art, but there is something to say about standing out with your presentation. And I think we're learning that during this series. It's like, if you wanna stand out, a little bit of presentation goes a long ways. And I think that that is also true when it comes to professional art, like when you present your ideas to your clients. That little bit of extra time that you spend presenting your ideas in a better way makes it so much better. It's like uh, when you order food and they put that like parsley leaf on the side. No one's gonna eat that stupid parsley leaf. It's there to be waste. It is literally wasted food, but it makes the food taste better because it looks better as a whole. You know what I'm saying? Don't know if that makes any sense. If a female character is wearing them, she can just stomp on her opponent. He'll die. I like how you assume that her opponent will be a man. <laughs> Cisgender people are the funniest. Gar 2. Oh, I see you're going the jewelry route. This is a magic thing glowing, not fire. <laughs> Guys, relax. It's not fire. Wow. Jeez, look, man, she's using the Tome R wall and he's got the chainmail armor. Holy snappies. I thought the Gar 2, a magical mystery item, could be a dragon. You would limit how often you could use Gar. Yeah, you can only use him once per game. So maybe, yeah, it could be like a spirit dragon that you can summon and he's there and gone for the rest of the game. Yeah, in case you don't know, the Gar 2 is an item that you can only use once per game. You're the entire game. And I'm not going to tell you what it does. I think the painting turned out kind of okay for being quite far out of my comfort zone. You're lying, it turned out amazing, especially for being out of your comfort zone. Still a bit rough though, that's true, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, okay? Sweaty. My mom watched my last video and she wanted you to know that uh, I was birthed like a normal mammal and not spawned from the fiery depths of hell, so. Oh my God, this is <laughs> Oh, damn, I'm getting Patrick vibes. Is that Sailor Moon, man? <laughs> These are gorgeous. Look at the tome, it's a Hello Kitty. Oh my God. The guard too is just an uwu orb. Holy. 10 geld or 25 schmeckles. Kachow, armor. I hope to finally be featured in your video. Well, 
Now is your time because guess what? This is beautiful. Look at that beautiful face on the shoulder. Lion motifs, that's right. Yeah, motifs is what they're called. Thank you. I don't words well good. By Artistry Alexis. Big shout out. Thank you for being the only person on Facebook. Zabio Arts fans, Amino. Wow, lots of boot designs. Blue Rose, nice job. Zabio Arts armor, I'm one month late. Well, guess what? I'm more than a month late, so <laughs> you're in, baby. Oh my god. Look at that X in the middle. I wasn't actually considering doing an X on a design until now, because you made it look really good. I don't know if I want to do that, though. Maybe I should do the X so that when people are playing the game, they'll be like, oh yeah, that's right. Freaking nerd over here made this game. Wow, lots of designs just for the boots. Wow, nice. I like the symbol and the chains and the bits of metal coming off of the book. I like the magic emanating from this book. On one hand, like I'm hoping that we can grow this channel and get more people watching this. But on the other hand, I kind of like having it this size because it's like, like I can read every comment. I can... I can go through and read all of your notes on every single thing that you posted. You know, there's only a couple hundred, so it's going to be a bittersweet day if I ever get to the point where it's so much that I can't go through it all. Not that I don't want that eventually, but enough. Stop it. It's time to actually make this. Phase one, research and reference images. Probably one of the most overlooked parts of creating a buttload of work around a central theme is gathering reference material. It's the thing that can easily separate good art from great art. This is my normal process. I go to Pinterest and create a new board for this project, and I'll constantly be looking back at these images as I'm designing and illustrating. Not just any images though. There are three very specific things that I'm looking for when I add a reference image to this board. First one is design. This mostly refers to the functionality of the thing that I'm drawing. So this can be like photographs or cosplay stuff because I'm less concerned about like the art style and stuff and more concerned about breaking down the mechanics of this, how it can actually work in real life. Don't worry, we'll break the rules later. Next thing I'm looking for in a reference image is lighting. I'm not really concerned with functionality on these images. All I want are pretty colors. They don't even have to have anything to do with what I'm drawing. And the last thing I'm looking for in a reference image is style. This one kind of combines the two a little bit. It's more of like an inspiration and a feel. Functionality and lighting scenarios are cool, but we need to constantly be vibe checking the whole time. Art style plays a big role here. Now that we put all these things together in one board, it kind of feels like having a bunch of parts to build IKEA furniture, but without any of the instructions. And if you're worried that you won't be able to do it because the parts look like they don't belong together, don't worry. That's totally normal. You don't have to be talented. Just follow a formula and everything will be just fine. The rest of this video is laying out that formula. Phase two, silhouettes. It's like that who's that Pokemon thing, right? It's just a shape, no details at all. So if your thing that you're drawing looks cool as just a shape, just a silhouette, it's a lot harder to screw it up later on. Trust me, I have lots of experience screwing stuff up. You can infer a lot about something just by the overall shape. Is it nice and friendly? Is it dangerous? Is it solid and strong? Is it quick and agile? Keep those things in mind and blob a bunch of stuff together. Phase three, define the design. Got the blob you wanted? Good. Now it's time to make a bunch of different designs with that blob. See if you can come up with a bunch of designs without changing the silhouette at all. This is where your reference images come into play. You can especially look at the ones that are kept for their functionality, like how the straps and buckles interact with each other or how wrinkles fold into each other, getting into details like that. Combine those details with all the weird stuff that your mind wants to see and you got a beautiful recipe that grandma would be proud of, baby. A good general rule is to make sure that there are some big shapes, medium and small shapes, so that it's not all uniform and evenly spaced out. Eventually, you can deviate from the silhouette if you feel like it, but make sure that your silhouette is still effective in what you're trying to convey. You know what I'm talking about? Does that make any sense? Like, do you want it to be solid strong, quick and blah, 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 blah. What feeling do you get from it, man? Phase four, color comps. 
I struggle a lot with color, and I think it's because I assume that other artists just automatically know what colors to pick, like it's second nature. But in reality, a lot of other professional artists have to experiment to find the colors that work. You can do this by working from super rough first, blocking in the color. If you're really struggling, find a few color palettes online and restrict yourself to those. If you're really, really struggling, assign a color to one of the values that you put down. It's like coloring a coloring book. Dark parts could be blue, light parts could be green, stuff like that, you know what I mean? Basically, at this stage, you want a bunch of color possibilities. Nothing refined, just a vibe check. Notice how I'm insisting on using that phrase a lot. It's because we're starting with a general vibe and slowly getting more and more specific, going from broad to detailed. If you do it any other way, you can easily get lost. Thinking of it like a funnel is going to be a great asset. Phase five, rough lines. You can actually skip this step, but I like to do it because it's hard for me to go from blobby shapes to finished line work. Working with rough lines like this helps me focus on perspective and proportions without getting caught up in the tiny little itty bitty details too quickly. That being said, if you have a good brain, you can just jump straight into phase six, line art. Now that we have our design, it's time for the line art. This is where it starts to get a little tricky because different art styles can clash at this stage. Some people like to do heavy comic book style hatching. Some people like going straight into painting with no lines at all. Some people like cell shading. Some people do a combination of a bunch of different things. Some people don't know what the hell they're doing. Follow your heart and let out your farts. Be yourself and express that stinky cloud of creativity you've been holding in all these years. We're counting on you. Good job. It doesn't have to be polished, clean line art. In fact, I hate doing clean line art. I despise it. But I'm including this line art phase because it gives you a chance to refine your designs and clean it up enough so that it's clear what's happening. Now, I've been saying to avoid details the whole time, but now we are at the detail stage of the design process. But now that we're here, I want you to do something very interesting with your drawings. Only detail the parts where you want your viewer to look. It's easier with a character because that's obviously going to be the face and maybe one other part, right? But you can actually purposefully leave parts less detailed, like for a character, for instance, you'd leave the feet less detailed because you don't really care about that. You care about the face and like maybe his weapon or something. And that's so that the viewer's eye will naturally go back to the parts you want them to focus on. So whatever you're drawing, whatever is the main focal point, make that the most detailed. And then everything else can kind of, you know what I mean? And related to that, this is a big, big, big tip here, okay? Listen. Don't make every single part of your drawing detailed. The eye needs some space to breathe. If you put intricate details on everything, it's like you're suffocating us. Get off of me, you fat duck. I need to breathe. Give me some blank spots on your drawing. Jeez, be considerate. All right, we're approaching the final phase of this whole process. But before we get to phase seven, I want to take 30 seconds to thank the sponsor of this video. Guys, you've heard me talk about Skillshare before, and that's because I really like working with them. They have a great service that I know will bring you value, especially if you like watching art tutorials in your spare time. If you don't already know, Skillshare is an online learning community with classes that are a lot like YouTube tutorials, but they're nice and neat and tidy like proper classes. They got everything from animation to fine art, music, everything that you need to make whatever kind of projects that you're into at the moment. Right now, I'm taking the weirdest class called Start Drawing Techniques for Pencil Drawing. I don't even know how to describe it. It's, I don't know. If you're working on a project right now, I highly recommend trying it out. The first thousand people who use the link in the description will get two months of their premium service for free. Do you know what that means? You can try it out and tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm not though. 
If you don't like it, you can cancel any time, but I think it's worth it for you to try it and see for yourself. Thank you very, very, very much to Skillshare for continuing to support this mess of a channel, and thank you for not skipping ahead. I see you. Phase seven, painting. Whew, we're finally here, guys. I'm gonna throw out a really scary word, but stick with me, lighting. It scares me too, but I like to think about it like anime and comic book characters, cell shading. There's one base color and a shadow color, and maybe sometimes a highlight color. Imagine where your light is coming from. An easy lighting scheme is like uh, where the light is coming from the top and maybe slightly to one side. I'm sure you've seen that before. And I should really make a video on all the different ways that you can light and shade your subject. But for now, the easiest way I know is to lay down your flat colors, make a new layer for the shadows above the flats, and then set that one to multiply. Your shadow layer is going to be on multiply. And start shading all the parts that are hiding from the sun with a cool gray. Now the colors are not going to be perfect at first. I can never get it right on the first try. So keep adjusting it until you get the colors that look good with your drawing. Now we get to black and white baby. I kind of went backwards, but sort of not really. I laid down the flat colors and then I'm using the flat colors to get my values. You can just go straight into black and white so you don't have to worry about all that, but never mind. I'm making it more confusing. Shut up, Andrew. Okay. I still have anxiety when it comes to picking color. So I always have to keep reminding myself that there is a more important part of color that is lurking in the shadow and is often forgotten, and it's called value. Value is a good vocab word that will save your life. It basically means how light or dark something is, and it's a thousand times more important than the colors you choose. So before you get into your pretty colors, Make sure that you have a good mix of dark, medium, and light, and not all evenly spaced. Sometimes the bigger areas with less detail can be darker, while the detailed areas can be lighter and vice versa. Just like how the big, medium, small shapes are not all evenly spaced out, don't let the value be evenly spaced out either. Now you can create a new layer and set it to color. Now just glob on some colors on top of that black and white and you're good to go, baby. Now if you look at your painting, all of the information is there. It's just time to tidy it up and make it look cleaner. Make sure that everything is inside the lines, stuff like that. And that's it. It's really weird how fast it comes together when you have that formula. <laughs> it's like it's like you're holding off on the detail, holding off on the detail, and then boom, detail's there, and you're like, what, uh, okay, I'm done? There's gotta be more, and oh my god, you can spend 20 hours trying to finish these and do more and more and more and more, but I mean, at some point, you gotta call it done and move on, man. If you want a chance to be one of the people at the beginning of the next episode, stick around because I'm gonna go through all the items that are gonna be in the next one. Oh boy, you are in for a doozy in episode four, my man. So we know that in this card game, you can customize your character and use different items and abilities to defeat your opponents, right? Well, the next video is designing all of the spells and abilities that your hero can use. We're really thinking outside the box on this one. Here are all the spells and abilities on screen. You can choose whichever one you want or as many as you want. You can do all of them for all I care. You could even do a bunch of designs just for one. In fact, that's a really good way to get your design brain going. Pick one thing and then do like 20 different iterations of that one thing. It's hard on your brain, but it'll get your design muscles pumped. Post your drawings using hashtag Arts spells for a chance to be in the next concept art class video. We're getting closer and closer to having this card game done. And guess what? This next episode with the spells and abilities is the last one before we design our heroes. Whew. Getting there. I'm excited to see what you come up with. You got a couple weeks before I go through them. Thank you so much for watching my stupid videos. I appreciate you. Leave a like and subscribe if you can. Maybe a comment, because I read all of them. And uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.